we are starting uh, first chapter chapter number 1 real numbers see class 9 in class 9 you already studied the number system just a continuation of that real numbers you know real numbers you know which are the numbers are including in that rational number irrational numbers prime numbers composite numbers this all or uh, all the digits all this includes the real numbers you listen here in this chapter first topic we are discussing about the fundamental theorem of arithmetic fundamental theorem of arithmetic you see what is the theorem states fundamental theorem of arithmetic states that every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes means any composite numbers we can factorize expressed means factorized factorized as the product of prime numbers i will show some of the examples you see here 28 see 28 we can factorize into 2 into 2 into 7 see 2 into 2 4 4 into 7 28 see next example 24 2 into 2 into 2 into 3. See 2 2 sir 4. 4 2 sir 8. 8 3 sir 24. Now 45 equal to. See 3 into 3 into 5. See 3 3 sir 9. 9 5 sir 45. That means any these three are composite numbers. See this composite numbers. Each composite numbers we are factorizing as the product of prime numbers. We know which are the prime numbers. Which are the prime numbers? Say 2. 3 5 7 11 13 etc these are known as the prime numbers prime numbers means the number should not have more than two factors that is two factors means either the same number or one they are the prime numbers such numbers we are calling as the prime numbers the actually we are factorizing with the prime numbers for two purposes which are the two purposes to calculate the lcm as well as to calculate the hcm least to common multiple that is lcm highest to common factor or gcd hcf or gcd we are calculating that we calculate by using the method of prime factorization you see here another theorem that also included the as the fundamental theorem of arithmetic what is that if after calculating the lcm and hcf product of lcm and hcf equal to the product of the two numbers involved For example, if you calculate the HCF and LCM of two numbers, if you find the product of the two numbers, that will be equal to the product of its HCF and LCM. That is this theorem is saying. That is the next theorem. That is product of LCM and HCF equal to the product of the two numbers involved. Go. Now we are coming to the first exercise. That is exercise number one point two. Why one point one is not there? That is. This year it is deleted. That is why exercise one point two. See the first question. What is the first question? We factorize with the prime numbers the given number. That is one forty. We prime factorizing. Prime factorizing the number one forty. See one forty. In class six or class seven you studied the divisibility test by the prime numbers. That means we see whether which prime number we can start with. This is easily we know it is can start with the two. C two. We are dividing one forty by two. That is seventy. Again seventy we divide into two. We are getting thirty five. Then we are dividing into five. Then it is getting seven. Seven divided by one. Seven one. Till one we get we continue the prime factorization. See now two one forty equal to two into two into five into seven. We are getting. Next question is one fifty six. One fifty six equal to see one fifty six also division we can start with the two. See two. Then we divide it. Then we are getting seventy-eight. Seventy-eight again divided into two. We are getting thirty-nine. Thirty-nine we parameterize with the or we divide with the three. Then we are getting answer as thirteen. Already thirteen is a prime number. That is why thirteen divided into thirteen. So we are getting one. Now the prime factors of one fifty-six equal to two into two into three into thirteen. We are getting the prime factors of these two numbers. This way we can factorize the remaining numbers in that exercise. That you can do as a homework also. Go. Now in exercise one point two, question number two. What is the question number two? Find the LCM and HCF of the following pairs of integers and verify that LCM into HCF equal to product of the two numbers. See first question twenty six and ninety one. Twenty six and ninety one. 
first we are prime factorizing the two numbers. So 26, we are prime factorizing 2 into 13. 91, we are prime factorizing of 7 into 13. Two numbers we have already prime factorized. Now what is the HCF? HCF means what highest common factor. Among the two numbers prime factors, which is the highest number that is commonly coming, that is 13 is repeated for the, uh, the prime factors of 26 and 91. That means 13 we can consider or we can cal calculate as the HCF. Now LCM. LCM means what here 2, here 7, and from this repeated one only ones we have to calculate. That means 2 into 7 into 13. That means we are getting as 192. That means HCF of 9, 26 and 91 is 13. LCM of 26 and 91 is 182. Now you see, we have to verify it. Product of HCF and LCM. Product of HCF and LCM. That is HCF is 13 and uh, LCM is 182. Product of 32 will be equal to 2366. That means product of HCF and LCM we are calculating as 2366. Now the product of the two numbers, that means our two numbers, 26 and 91. See, product of 26 and 91 also we are getting as 2366. That is why we can uh, verify that product of LCM and HCF equal to product of the two numbers. Go. See, next question. 510 and 92. See, we are prime factorizing 510. See, we are prime factorizing 510. That is the 2, then it will be 255. 255 is divisible by 3, then we are dividing the 85. 85 is divisible by 5, then we are getting 70. 70 is the prime number, then we are getting 1. That is prime factors of 510 equal to 2 into 3 into 5 into 17. Now we are prime factorizing 92. See, 92, we are starting with the 2, 46. Again, starting with the, uh, dividing the 2. Then 23. 23 itself a prime number, then we are getting the prime numbers. 92 equal to 2 into 2 into 23. Now see the HCF, which is coming common between the two lines. That is only 2. That means HCF is getting us 2. LCM, see from these two, we are taking only 1, 2. Then 3 into 5 into 17 into 2 into 23. 2 into 3 into 5 into 17 into 2 into 23. When we multiply these together, we are getting 23,460. LCM of 510 and 92 we are calculating as 23,460. Now HCM and LCM we calculated. Now we are verifying. Verifying. See, LCM into HCM equal to LCM we calculate as 23,460 into 2. When we multiply these two, we are getting as 46,920. 46,920. Now the product of the two numbers. 510 into 92. Again, we are calculated as equal to 46,920. That means product of LCM and HCM equal to product of the two numbers. Then, hence we verify it. Go. See, in question number 3, uh, the last question you do it as a homework. That means calculate the uh, LCM and HCM of 336 and 54 and verify it. Now we are coming to the question number 3. What is the question number 3? Find the LCM and HCF of the following integers by applying the prime factorization method. By applying the prime factorization method, we calculate the LCM and HCF of 12, 15 and 21. See, 12, prime factors of 12, 2 into 2 into 3, 2 into 2 into 3 is of 12. 15, 3 into 5 is 15. 21, 3 into 7. We calculated the prime factors of the three numbers. See now HCF. HCF is what? The common number which is repeated in the three cases. The common factor which is repeated in the three cases. You can see the line what I mark. That means only three. That means HCF of 12, 15 and 21 is getting us three. Now LCM. LCM means the common number repeated one time we return. Then the remaining number. That is 3 into 2 into 2 into 5 into 7. That means multiplying this we will get the LCM as equal to 420. Now we got the HCF of 3, LCM as 420. Now the question number 2 and the 3, you do it as a homework. Now the question number 4, what is the question? Given that HCF of 306, 657 equal to 9, then find the LCM of 306 and 657. See, HCF of 306 and 657 is equal to 9. 
that is given. Now we calculate the LCM of these two given numbers. See, as we know the theorem, what is the theorem? HCF into LCM or product of HCF and LCM equal to the product of the two numbers. That means HCF is already given as 9. 9 into LCM equal to the product of the two numbers. Numbers are 306 and 657. That means equal to 306 into 657. That means LCM equal to LCM equal to 306 into 657 divided by 9. This 9 will be divided here. This 9 and 306 we can cancel by 34. 34 into 657. As we are getting as the product equal to 22,338. That means LCM of 306 and 657 we are getting as equal to 22,338. Go. Question number 5. Now we are going to the question number 5. See the question number 5. Check whether 6 raised to n can end with the digit 0 for any natural number n. You see, 6 raised to n can end, value of 6 raised to n can end with the 0 or not for any natural number. That is a question. Let n we are taking as the natural numbers as 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Then, if n equal to 0, what will be the value of 6 raised to n? 6 raised to n equal to 6 raised to 0. If the exponent is 0, any number exponent is 0, value will be equal to 1. That means 6 raised to 0 equal to 1. Now, if n equal to 1, then value of 6 raised to n. 6 raised to 1 equal to 6. 6 raised to n, when n equal to 2, it will be equal to 6 square. 6 square equal to 36. 6 raised to n, when n equal to 3, that means 6 cube. 6 cube value is equal to 216. From this above four examples, we can understand that 6 raised to n cannot end with the digit 0 for any natural number n. This is the conclusion that means 6 raised to n cannot end with the digit 0 for any natural number n. Revisiting irrational numbers. Revisiting irrational numbers means what? We are again revising what are the irrational numbers. In class 9, we studied rational number, irrational number. What is a rational number? A rational number which can be expressed in the form of p by q. If a number we can express in the form of a uh, of p by q, that is a numerator and a denominator, then it is a rational number. Which number we could not express in that form? It is irrational numbers. For example, some examples of irrational numbers are root 2, root 3, root 5, etc. These are called the irrational numbers. Some examples of irrational numbers. Now we are coming to our exercise number 1.3. The question number 2. What is the question number 2? Prove that 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. We prove 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. And how we are proving? Listen. Let us assume that 3 plus 2 root 5 is a rational number. We are assuming. We are assuming. We are following this procedure. That is why once more listen. Let us assume that 3 plus 2 root 5 is rational. Now, that is, we know a rational number is in the form of p by q. That is why 3 plus 2 root 5 equal to p by q. Then we are calculating 2 root 5 we are keeping in the left side and transposing this 3 to the right side. That is, 2 root 5 equal to p by q minus 3. Then we are simplifying q as the LCM. Then it will become equal to p minus 3q by q. Then this 2 also we are transposing to the right side. That means root 5 equal to p minus 3q divided by 2q. Now you listen. The LHS, that is root 5. Root 5 is an irrational number. RHS you see p, 3, q, 2, q, all are irrational numbers. That means LHS is an irrational number. RHS is coming as a rational number. That means what? See, LHS is an irrational number and RHS is a rational number. It means it contradicts our assumption. What was our assumption? Our assumption was 3 plus 2 root 5 is an a rational number. That means to contradict means 3 plus 2 root 5 is irrational. Hence, we proved 3 plus 2 root 5 is an irrational number. See, in the question number 3, first one, what is the question? Prove that 1 by root 2 is irrational. Prove that 1 by root 2 is irrational. The same procedure. What is that? Let us assume that 1 by root 2 is rational. 1 by root 2 is rational. We assume it. See, that is, if it is a rational number, 1 by root 2 will be equal to 1 p by q. Because p by q is the general form of a rational number. 
that means 1 equal to p by q into root 2 and root 2 we are keeping in the right side then p by q when we transpose to the left side it will be equal to q by p when we bring to the left side that is what is listen q by p this is also the form of a rational number that means lhs is a rational number and we know root 2 is an irrational number that means rhs is coming as an irrational number again it contradicts our assumption it contradicts our assumption that is we can prove that 1 by root 2 is an irrational number this way we are proving this type of questions as irrational i hope you understand go see next theorem what is that if x equal to p by q be a rational number such that prime factorization of q prime factorization of q means prime factorization of the decimal uh, means uh, the denominator is in the form of 2 raised to n 5 raised to m where n and m are non negative integers then x has a decimal expansion which terminates this theorem is used for without actually performing the long division we have to check whether the denominator of the fraction is terminating or non terminating now we are coming to the first question in the exercise that is 13 by we have to check 13 by 3125 has a terminating decimal expansion or non terminating decimal expansion that means we are going to factorize prime factorize the denominator of this value that is 13 by we are prime factorizing 3125 see the prime factorization of 3125 5 dividing then 625 again with the 5 we are getting 125 again with the 5 we are getting 25 again with the 5 we are getting 5 that means the prime factorization of 3125 is coming as 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 that means 5 5 times repeated that means 13 divided by 5 raised to 5 the exponent is coming as 5 that means this value we can write in this way that is 13 divided by 2 raised to 0 into 5 raised to 5 because 2 raised to 0 equal to 1 if any number if the exponent is 1 or 0 the value is coming as 1 that means 2 raised to 0 is 1 1 into 5 raised to 5 we are getting the same value that means see value of n we are getting as 0 value of m we are getting as 5 that means they are non-zero integers therefore we can say this is a terminate the denominator is terminates that expansion is decimal expansion is terminates next question 77 divided by 210 see we are going to the prime factorization of 210 see 77 divided by the prime factorization of 210 is 2 into 3 into 5 into 7 that means this value this denominator we can express like this 2 raised to 1 into 3 into 5 raised to 1 into 7 it never comes to our theorem that means it cannot express in the form of 2 raised to n into 5 raised to m that is why we can say it is non-terminating it is non-terminating in the same process after prime factorizing the denominator of the given numbers we can find out whether these are terminates or non-terminates i hope you are understand